In this video, you're gonna learn about three tricks that you can use inside of Edison for vocals to instantly improve your songs. I'm gonna break each one down for you and show you how you can do it step by step. And if you learn these tricks, you can use them in your productions to improve your songs and impress your friends. So let's jump in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to record your voice multiple times using Edison inside of FL Studio. So let's take this vocal channel where I have my microphone plugged in. I'm gonna load in Edison here underneath of my simple recording chain that I'm using, which is an EQ and a simple compressor. And I'm gonna load in Edison underneath of that. So it's under that miscellaneous section. It's gonna bring up Edison. I'm gonna expand this out just a little bit. So what I've done in the actual song part, so if you come back out here to the playlist, is I have selected this section. And so this could be like a verse of a song or a chorus or something that you want to record through multiple times. And so what I've done is set up Edison on the channel that I'm gonna be recording vocals on. And I'm going to say to record on play. And what's, and I have to arm this one. So this is armed for recording now inside of Edison. So what this is gonna do is as soon as I start playing inside of here, it's going to start recording into Edison. And as soon as it finishes to the end of this little place that I've selected, it's going to loop back around and it's going to start recording the same thing again, but it's just going to record another pass of that. So what that's helpful to do is if you want to record a single section a couple of different times just to make sure that you get it right, you can do that with this method really quickly. So let me show you how this works. So I'm going to press play. I'm going to bring up the mixer. I'm going to turn this vocal mic on so that I can do a couple passes and then I'll show you how that looks. All I want to know is do you see what I see? Different changes, different faces, but it's all the same to see. People change, the circumstances just stay the same. But baby, you and I, we can be the answer to set it free. Press the space bar to stop the recording on Edison. And then I also had to press the stop button up here to stop recording the actual song itself. So what happens now is I have three different takes of that same part I just recorded back to back in Edison, which is really nice because what that means is I can come in here and double click on one and just audition the one section that I want to hear. So let's listen to this real quickly. All I want to know is do you see what I see? So let's say I don't like that particular take and I want to use the or I want to listen to the next one so I can do the same thing. I'll double click on this other point and just listen through this next take. And if I like that one, maybe I'll use that one in the song or I can jump to this third take and decide that I want to use that inside the song. So let's double click back here at that marker. Let's say this is the track that I want to use. So now all I need to do is to take this and I'm going to click this button over here, which is drag the copy sample or selection, and I'm gonna drag it into the playlist. And the thing that I need to make sure that I do is actually drag it where the start of that marker is, because that's where it started recording at. So if I do that, it's always gonna line it up in the right place inside of FL Studio, which is really helpful. So let's try that real quick. So now that I've dragged that into the playlist, you can see it's lined up. So if we play that back, it should be lined up pretty perfectly to what we did before. So let's listen back. All I want to know is do you see what I see? So you can see it's all lined up, but now I can go and take this audio file and then I can put that into a mixer track and start mixing that all on its own with a whole different set of plugins. If you are gonna use this trick with Edison, I just wanna warn you about one thing. And that is if you save the file with Edison loaded into the mixer track, it is going to make your project file huge. So when you looked at your projects before, you probably had a pretty small file size if you ever looked at it. But when you save it with an Edison file loaded and you've recorded a whole bunch of takes, it will be a much bigger file. So my recommendation for you to save space on your computer is to save the audio file from Edison into your project folder as an audio file 
and then to remove all the audio from Edison and delete Edison from the mixer track before you save your project. And that will cut down on the size of the file that you're gonna be saving. Just trust me on this one, it will save you a lot of time and headache down the road. So for the next thing that I'm gonna show you how to do in Edison is when you are recording a vocal, sometimes you're in a room that has a little bit of noise. So maybe there is a fan that's running or something with your computer or maybe a vent that's blowing out some air or something along those lines that creates a little bit of noise when you're actually trying to record your voice. And when you record that, you don't wanna have that when you're getting into your mixing for your vocals. So I'm gonna show you, after I record a little bit of section with noise in the background, I'll show you how to use Edison to remove that noise from the vocal. All I wanna know is do you see what I see? Different faces, same old places, but it's not the same to me. So you can see I recorded this small section of the vocal and in between that vocal you'll see this little section in here but you can still see that there's some noise or some things that are happening in there. So what we're going to do is use some of the tools inside of Edison that will help you clean that up and get rid of it. So I'm going to select just a little small portion where it's just the vent noise and I'm going to come over here to this icon that is called the cleanup denoise and acquire noise profile and all that is is just a fancy way of saying i want you to get rid of the noise in this recording so i'm going to press the button it's going to bring up this window i'm going to say acquire the noise profile which all that means is this piece that i selected right here is the noise that i want to get rid of in this recording so now that i've told Edison what I want to get rid of I need to go ahead and select the entire thing so I pressed control and a to select the entire section that I just recorded and now what I'm going to do is press that toothbrush icon again and this time I'm going to say accept and it's going to think for a little bit and then when it gets done what you should see is that that line has gone down I'm going to press control Z so you can see what it was before blow that up a little bit so that was what it was before, and that's what it is afterwards. So it's gotten rid of a lot of the noise that's happening in between the parts where I'm singing. So let's listen to what that sounds like. Just a chunk of that. Is do you see what I see? And then it goes almost completely silent after that, which is great. So that means if you end up recording something that's not in the greatest place where you get some noise, you can actually tell FL Studio to get rid of the noise that you don't want using that tool. The goal is really to create audio files that sound good from the get-go, but I understand that sometimes you can't record in the best conditions. So use this to clean up files that are pretty good but maybe just need a little bit of work. But if you're having a lot of issues and you're having to cut out a lot of noise, then maybe you need to look at the location that you're recording or try to do some things that will help minimize the amount of noise. So finding another room that doesn't have a whole lot of noise going on in it might be the best solution for you. So the last thing I'm going to show you is probably one of the coolest things that there is in Addison. And that is you can record your voice singing notes, individual notes into Edison. And then you can actually tell Edison to take those notes and share it with another instrument inside of FL Studio. I know that sounds confusing, but I'm going to show you step by step how you can do this so that you can try it out yourself. So let me show you how I kind of have this set up inside of the channel rack. I opened up a grand piano. So I came over here on the left side. I went under packs. I got instruments, went to keyboard, and I just grabbed this grand piano and I dragged it under here. And then it opened up this uh, DW player or direct wave player. So this is the instrument that we're going to end up sending everything to. But first we need to record singing the notes before we can send that over to the grand piano. So let's go back over to the mixer track. I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to record a little small section really quickly. So again, the setup for this is that I have Edison turned on. I have it to record on play. I have this section of the song selected out here in the playlist. And then I'm going to just press play to record that. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum,
So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell Edison, I want you to send this idea, these notes that I just sang, I want you to take those and I want you to send those to another instrument. So in order to do that, we have to go back out to the channel rack, which is F6. I'm gonna make sure that I come down to the unsorted. And I'm gonna pick that grand piano channel. So I'm gonna left click here and make sure that that green button or that button is green over here on the channel rack. Then I'm gonna come back to Edison. I'm gonna open that up. And then I'm gonna come over here to this icon that looks like a wrench. I'm gonna left click on it. And then I'm gonna come down here to where it says convert to score and dump to the piano roll. So when I do that, you'll see it worked up there really quickly. And then when I come back out to the channel rack, if I open this up, what you'll see is that it has dropped in the melody that I sang into this piano. So it's not gonna sound perfect. It doesn't get it right exactly, but it gives you ideas to work with. So this is what it sounds like right now. <laughs> so you can see there are some funny things on the end of that, but you could take this idea and turn it into something. So I'm gonna play it with the voice and the melody from the piano side by side so that you can see how FL Studio took what I did with my voice and then turn that into what the piano is actually playing. So this is what it sounds like. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? You can sing something into the microphone, then all of a sudden FL Studio can figure out how to take what you just sang and put that into notes that you can play on another instrument. If you find that you get frustrated with vocal mixing in your songs, make sure that you check out the link in the description below where you can download a free PDF guide that will walk you through a step-by-step -step process for starting a vocal mix in your very next song. And make sure to check out this next video which will show you how to get a great vocal mix using just stock plugins. And I will see you in the next round.